Business Buzz. The Business Buzz is brought to you by Cayman Insurance Center, celebrating 46 years in the Cayman Islands, specializing in property life and other lines of insurance products and services. And also brought to you by Cayman Medical Supplies. Call them at 949-6211. And now, Radio Cayman presents... The Business Buzz, an insightful and fresh take on a variety of issues that impact the local business environment. This is where we address the business business topics topics that that matter. Here's your host, Anita Khan. Good morning and welcome. Good morning and welcome to Radio Cayman's Business Buzz. Today is Tuesday, December 8th. And uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you on the Business Buzz this morning. I want to say thank you to Paul. Good morning, Paul. He's sitting in for Susan. He's in a hot seat this morning. If you're on your commute this morning, welcome to the Buzz. Thank you so much for tuning in. You can also join us on YouTube and watch us as well as listen on Radio Cayman. This morning on the Business Buzz, we put the spotlight on green, clean home care services. And in the studio joining me is Mr. Blake Hurlston. Mr. Hurlston is the owner, director of Green Clean Home Care Services. Good morning, Mr. Hurlston. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you in the studio this morning. We we always have you on the air uh, with your local vocals singing, right? But this morning we have you promoting your own business, and it's a pleasure. Green Clean Home Care Services. That's correct. Mr. Hulston, can you give us some just some background details on why you decided to open Green Clean Home Care Services? Thank you. It's an easy question to start. Sure. Over the years of experience, uh, you'd say uh, allergies from laundry detergents and uh, clean, uh, clean, clean, sorry, cleaning products, mm-hmm. and uh, it took some research because you can go to the doctor. And what they give you, and they'll tell you it's temporary. So you have to find out what's giving you allergies. Uh-huh. So the research got deeper and deeper, and we realized that uh, there are solutions, and it comes from the products we use mostly and types of foods that we eat. So we stuck with the products. You didn't go the, to the food we eat. Well, I did that too, but I want to take that in this conversation. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fair. So, so mm-hmm. yeah, so we... Uh, after our experience, it was kind of a rough road, actually. And anybody who've experienced it and still experiencing it, it's not an easy road. Because, um, I mean, things like you could be comfortable somewhere and suddenly you start to itch. Why am mm-hmm. I itching? Laundry detergent. And then you have to find out which one is it. So you start switching products and going down the line. And finally you reach, at the point I'm at right now, as far as laundry detergent, it's a hammer soda based uh, products that don't bother us at all. Um, and then cleaning detergents, um, bleach is uh, very strong. Mm-hmm. Um, people who are allergic to bleach can experience um, bronchial issues. And uh, we've had some of that as well. So we started to study on those lines. Okay. And we made a lot of discoveries that there are solutions and substitutes of those products. So you did your research before you went green. Absolutely. Now, a lot of people, you know, they say, like I hear, you know, I've gone green, we go green. Can you just tell us a little bit about when you say green, clean, how does that, how does that work? Okay, green, clean is completely different from the traditional way of cleaning, mm-hmm. product-wise, to begin with. All the products are plant-based. And uh, even though they're plant-based, we still question our callers and our would-be uh, potential customers because even though they're plant-based, they are still potential, there is still potential for some people to be allergic to certain things. Like citrus, for example. Some people have allergies to citrus. So okay. some of our products do use citrus mm-hmm. or do have citrus. So in a case like that, we use a substitution, whereas it won't affect the customer. Okay, so everything you do, 
is basically plan based. That's correct. Okay. Now, um, I'm thinking maybe I'm allergic to aloe. So if you have something that is aloe based, you know, that could be a problem. So you question, say your first your first time clients, you question them on, on any any allergic rea uh, rea allergic reactions to anything plant based. Correct. Basically. And we keep record of those customers. Okay. That's very good. I like that. <laughs> now, what year did you start your business, Mr. Blake? Uh, this started in March 2009. Sorry, 2019. 2019. <laughs> I'm so, going to, okay, far, so you just had a first anniversary. Yeah, just right, first, first anniversary. Right in COVID. Correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, COVID mm -hmm. has its downsides, but it gave us an opportunity to revamp and look uh, at what we're doing mm -hmm. uh, from a better perspective. Okay. Because... Um, for instance, uh, the employment process that we're using is quite critical, and we weren't getting exactly what we wanted. We were just kind of using what we could get as far as um, skills, skill sets, and people in the business. Uh, so COVID gave us a chance, chance to break down, step back, and start again. So that's where we're at right now. So you re you basically had a look at what you were doing before, and see how you're moving forward. Right now, and you have what you call a bar above the norm. Can you tell us a little bit more about sure. what that means to your company? Bar above the norm, to begin with, besides having different products, starts with the recruitment process. Um, all of my employees are would be applicants. Mm -hmm. must have experience, previous experience, in janitorial and housekeeping. And they must have a certificate or a reference letter to back it up. After that, that's been accepted, then we do a face-to-face -face interview. And we calculate then what their position is with customer relations or talking to people, etc. If I'm happy with that, then we go on. We have the company has designed a, I call it an IQ test. Okay. It's a 13 question page. And 13 page? 13 question page. 13 question page. Yes. Okay. I was thinking 13 pages? No, no. no. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it just focuses on everyday issues you may face. Mm. So it kind of tests uh, them, uh, find out what the, what's in their head how capable they are getting themselves out of trouble without making more trouble, okay. so to speak, right. and still keeping the customer. Uh, if they pass that, then they're put on to practical, whereas they put in a working scenario, mm -hmm. and we watch them and see what they do and what they don't do. If they pass that, then we accept them, and the final thing is that they have to do an online course to be, get certified internationally. Oh, that would bring us to our next question. Yes. But okay, but finish up what you're saying. Sorry. So mm -hmm. uh, once they become internationally certified, mm -hmm. two things happen for them. One, their title changes. And no longer, they no longer use janitor. They become cleaning technicians. The certificate cleaning says tech so. I like Paul. You like that? Yeah, Paul says yes. He likes that. A cleaning technician. That's and, right. And secondly, they no longer work on the minimum wage. And I'm not talking about twenty five cents more. Mm -hmm. I have the best paying cleaning company in Cayman, hands down. Should I leave my job here and switch? If you like to do it, that's another thing. You have okay. to love what you're doing. You have to love what you're doing. I will do my best to keep you interested. So because the the employee is my investment. And how would you do that? Without telling them any state secrets. <laughs> <laughs> well, first of all, uh, showing them gratitude, either okay. financially mm -hmm. or keep that it works keep, yes. for me. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me go a little in depth. Uh, I, I witness um, a lot of people working in clean companies. I witness people who don't have a job two days a week to have a job. Uh, they got to pay rent. Mm -hmm. They got to put food on the table. They got farmers overseas. They got to send money. To, how are they going to do all that? So the criteria we set is completely different. That's why I have less than ten employees, and my goal is to reach ten employees. 
I can't see myself going much further because of the market. You have to make sure that your employees are happy with what they're doing, they're content, and they will do their job. You should have brought one with you this morning. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> I tried to, but she had a job to go to. Okay. She's the she's the the um, number one. Number clean, one. She's the number technician. one lady. Yeah, she's number she's one. Number one. I like that. No, Mr. Halston, um, let's talk before we go to break. Let's talk about uh, what it means for your company to be green, green certified. And you are green certified by the International Janitorial Cleaning Services Association. And simply put, IJCSA. Mm -hmm. What does it mean for Green Clean Home Care Services? IJCSA is a foundation corporation Mm -hmm. that uh, acts as a governing body worldwide for international, uh, international worldwide um, for cleaning services. They're into other things as well, but they're into green products and green processing because they're about protecting the environment. Now, to be a member of IGSCSA, you have also to pass a test. It's How a two, difficult is this? It's a two-and-a-half-hour test. Two, two-and-a-half hours. And I'm proud oh. to say mm-hmm. that uh, our re- reviews and our uh, comments and the way we achieve this is on their website. Okay. Green Clean Cayman. So, how, did you, so do you alone have to, as the owner, is this just for you to take this test? It's just for the heads of, so of we the, can pass it down. Okay. So you 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 um, sit with your employees and you pass on that knowledge. Also, basically. also we have access to the same company mm-hmm. that we can uh, do. Uh, what we call um, video conferencing. Okay. So we set up a, a TV, for example, so they can see it. And it's like you're in a classroom. So they the employees get access to that as well. But we have all the past schools and we have the membership. They don't have the membership. Owners, right. managers have the men- membership. That's exciting. I like that. <laughs> now, Green Clean, I mean, I sometimes I walk into this building and I start to, to sniff. I, I start to sneeze. I start to, I just, my eyes start to, to, to run. And it happens every time. So I think we should go green, basically. I definitely think we should. I, it, it's something that we, we should think about because I'm pretty sure other people, you know, other member staff have the same problem. But it's, it's not really a problem. If I go back out in the sunshine, it's, it's gone. Mm. It's gone. So I know what's my problem. It's my cl- our cleaning, uh, our cleaning de- detergent. Now, what's unique about um, green clean home care services? The, the cleaning market, or our cleaning market here in Cayman, is basically a little bit saturated. Mm-hmm. Um, how do you stand out in the janitorial cleaning industry to bring something different and refreshing? We know you have your plan base. But is it just the plant-based products that you use? Is that what brings out Green Clean? No, that's why we use the word care in our uh, model. Mm -hmm. Because we believe in building good customer relations. We take care of the customer. Sometimes we even cater to what the customer really wants rather than just doing it the way we think it should be done. And we'll tell them the differences so they can make their choices. If you do this, we Mm -hmm. can do this for you, but then don't expect this to happen because this needs to happen for this. It's all a chain reaction. So um, be catered to the customer. And trust is top of the menu. Top of the menu. Top of the menu (laughs) when it comes to uh, having (laughs) customer-based relationships. I want customers. And at at every cleaning, when it's finished, at the end of the day, we call the customers we had to make sure they're satisfied, they have any suggestions, uh, anything they think should be done differently. So far, we had no problems. So if, if you come to my home and you clean for me, you do a follow-up. That's do you correct. do that with each cleaning? Or just say, for instance, you have a regular customer. Do you still follow up after cleaning or each cleaning? Okay, regular customers? Mm-hmm. No, we have them down pat. 
Okay. So you know exactly not, what not, I want. Not every day, but we still, at least once a week, call them to make sure they're okay. Okay. The reason why we do that because we are taking people's money. We give, we, we're selling them a service, mm -hmm. but we have to make sure that when, pe when people spend their money, they feel good about it. And that's where that care comes in. That's correct. About your money, about your health, about that particular scent in your home. You know how it caters to your to your allergies and the mm -hmm. good stuff, Mr. Blake. When we come back, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll talk about some of the range of your services. If you're just joining us, this is the Business Buzz, and you're in your company in the studio, Mr. Blake Hurston. He's the owner director of Green Clean Home Care Services, and we want to say thank you to our sponsors of the Business Buzz on this Tuesday, Cayman Medical Supplies. Thank you so much, and Cayman Insurance Center. The Cayman Islands boasts of a long, colorful, and rich history. In tribute to our roots, Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands, is pleased to bring you the Historical Vignette Series. Brought to you by Rotary Central. For more than 110 years, Rotary members have used their passion, energy, and intelligence to take action on sustainable projects. The Cayman Islands, he hath founded it upon the seas. Cayman teas, or otherwise known as bush tea, have long been known for their medicinal properties. A past director of the Agriculture Society, Mr. Alvin McLaughlin, recalls fondly that his knowledge of Cayman teas came from his mother, Miss Crystalline McLaughlin, and grandmother, Cathura Jackson. Before the prevalence of modern medicine, Cayman bush teas were regularly boiled to alleviate various complaints and ailments. Guava leaf and pomegranate are both known for keeping blood sugar levels low in diabetics and were an important part of Kamangan tradition. To make a good brew, pick and dry leaves for a few days, put a handful of leaves into a pan, cover with water, and bring to a boil. Brew for five minutes, then pour, leaving the remainder to seep with the leaves still in the pan. Teas can be sweetened with honey and sugar. Information from this historical vignette was sourced courtesy of Mr. Alvin McLaughlin, the History of Agriculture, 50th Annual Agriculture Show Magazine. Rotary, we've been part of the beginnings, the then and now, of the Francis Bodden Girls' Home in Bodden Town and the Bonaventure Boys' Home in West Bay. Rotary Central, along with community partners, assisting students to overcome barriers on their path of learning during this pandemic. Thousands of dollars in laptops. Support for the annual Rotary Island-wide health check and diabetes training by Rotary. The National Blood Bank, supported by Rotary since 1999. Lives saved, lives restored. Just a little of what we've done and continue to do. Rotary opens opportunities. Radio Cayman's Historical Vignettes was brought to you by Rotary Central. For more than 110 years, Rotary members have used their passion, energy, and intelligence to take action on sustainable projects. Oh, oh gosh. <sighs> Don't let the stress of taking care of loved ones get you down. Home care, now made easier with Cayman Medical Supplies. 100% Caymanian owned, Cayman Medical Supplies now stocks a wide range of home care supplies. Hospital beds, all types of wheelchairs, including beach access wheelchairs, lifts, commodes, shower chairs, walkers, Curad brand orthopedic supplies, free blood glucose monitors with the purchase of one pack of test strips, blue underpads, and a whole lot more. Need home care convenience? Drop by Cayman Medical Supplies at 93 Smith Road, Windward Center, or call 9 949-6211. Free delivery. Open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Still delivering island-wide for your convenience. The road to becoming a British Overseas Territory citizen just became a lot smoother. You can now apply online at online.odg.gov.ky. If you or someone you know needs to be naturalized or registered as a British Overseas Territory citizen, or if you are a citizen and need to replace your lost or damaged certificate, complete the process at online.odg.gov.ky. Anita Khan. Welcome back to the Business Buzz. If you're just joining us, we're speaking with Mr. Blake Hurlston. Mr. Hurlston is the owner director of Green Clean Home Care Services, and we're discussing uh, 
we're talking about putting a spotlight this morning on his business. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Blake Harleston. Can I call him Mr. Blake? You can call him anything <laughs> you want. <laughs> Still call me at the supper. Okay. All right. <laughs> Mr. Austin, um, let's, uh, let's talk about, um, before the break, we said we'll talk about some of your services, some of your range of services mm-hmm. that you provide at Green Clean Home Care Services and what is included in the service. Well, we do uh, general cleaning. Mm-hmm. General cleaning uh, is when the customer says, I just want you to freshen up. And, uh, so there's no deep cleaning in there. No That's just cleaning. a general touch-up. Right. Make it smell in, fresh. And so saying that, mm-hmm. I've had customers call me and say, um, I thought you were just going to clean the floor and mop. Your workers have my place pulled apart. I said, is that good or bad? You <laughs> tell me and I'll change it right now. He said, no, 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 it's great, it's great. So... These ladies, uh, they're very thorough. So general cleaning for them is much more than we're discussing. Okay. But really what it means is just a freshen up and hit the areas that need to be freshened. Okay. But they're not going to do that. I guarantee you that. <laughs> I guess they go in uh, um, and they kind of uh, uh, look around, see what's going on, and say, well, look, we need to at least vacuum the carpet, right. you know, give it a fresh look. Mm-hmm. Okay, I like that because sometimes you have to, you have a cleaner, you have to tell them exactly what to do. But yeah, after they've done the online course, they realize the importance mm-hmm. of doing a little more when the customer asks. Okay, and my head technician says I never want anybody to call and say I didn't clean your place. Okay, so what are, <laughs> what are some of the other services that you provide? Uh, mm-hmm. We do uh, deep cleaning. That's very thorough. Okay. Uh, we do laundry services. Um, post wedding cleaning includes uh, sanitation and mold prevention services. We have uh, uh, products that uh, prevent mold growing and can kill mold when we find it. Um, move in, move out. That's mostly uh, condos and people that own condos, mm-hmm. not the not the fly in, fly out. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you have people that own condos. <laughs> Those are the ones that you have to work a little bit harder yeah. to fly in, fly out, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, small office cleaning. Uh, okay. We do disinfectant automizing spray. Uh, sure, you've heard of ESS. ESS. The ESS electronic um, molecule system has its perks. I decided not to go that way mm-hmm. because uh, for one reason, it will clean surfaces. It will clean the air within 10 feet of any perimeter. Uh, anything that's hanging in the air, it will do that job. Um, but to give you an example, uh, handprints, doorknobs, uh, stairway rails. If a person's hand is moist, they leave a print on it. The ESS is not going to remove that print and guarantee but most of the time, guaranteed, the print is what's holding more bacteria. The print? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. If you just hit mm. the surface of the print and the print remains, under that is another layer. It's just like layers of skin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I find that the, the product that we use is a mist. And it, it does have a content of alcohol in it. But it dissipates, yeah, I mean, very quickly. Self-destructs. Self-destructs. <laughs> but also when you mm-hmm. use it on surfaces mm-hmm. that are being touched, mm-hmm. it has a more dire effect. Okay. I compare it to if you're driving your car in the rain with no AC, how you get the fog, the fog. windows. Mm-hmm. And the minute you turn on the defrost, it just goes. Similar process. Okay. So what are some of the, um, the actual products that, you, if you have time to, just in a nutshell... Well, most of my products are essential oils. Okay. And uh, citrus. And citrus. Yeah. Citrus is big in... Uh, in, in yeah, citrus is a, is a multi-cleaner. It can clean anything, anytime, any place. So can I just squeeze an orange and just go start cleaning? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I don't I, think so. Okay, since you're on that topic, I also have the ability mm-hmm. and the knowledge. Mm-hmm. I learned this stuff from mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. being members of... I GCSA and other 
associates um, how to mix and blend natural stuff to make your own cleaning products and citrus <laughs> the smell is amazing it's amazing oh i just love the smell and it's anything citrusy now how about those folks who um who suffer from allergies and related bronchial uh, conditions how 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 does the green cleaning work for them what it does is that um for instance, we go a little further with people who have allergies. We even um, check their air condition filters, mm -hmm. see what kind of filters they're using, because uh, not all filters are designed to block allergens. And uh, so we take it from that point. They ask them questions. They see. Uh, they have carpet. If they have carpet, also is another thing that produces allergens. If you took a flashlight. Turn it on. Turn all the lights off in your room. You have carpet. Take a flashlight, turn it on, and let it stand in the corner, and you can see the molecules just traveling in the light. That's why you're inhaling when you're sleeping. Oh, that's scary. That can cause a nightmare. Yeah. A lot of people <laughs> don't think about that. Hell twice and, and, and everything. If, <laughs> and if people have animals in their house, then mm -hmm. that's another process as mm -hmm. well. I'm sure. How about, how affordable are your services? Uh, we are very competitive. Okay. Um, if you ratio price for product, right now I can say on the air that uh, people are getting more than what they pay for. More than what they pay for. That's that's good. Now, we, are you gonna, this is Christmas season. Are you going to have any Christmas promotions? Um, yes, but you'll have to listen to Radio Cayman for those. <laughs> Because you do sponsor, you do uh, Green Clean came and does sponsor as R RC Fusion, RC Fusion, yes. Yes, and uh, mm -hmm. listen to Radio Cayman for the promotions, and also you can go on our website. Okay, we we'll, we look forward to that. Mm -hmm. And what would you recommend as in a minimum uh, number of uh, hours required to maintain any kind of high cleaning standards for home environment? Minimum Should it be done weekly or? Okay. Yeah. Minimum service is Daily. four hours. Then it depends hours. on okay. the, the type of area. It's a high traffic area mm -hmm. or a home with uh, animals, pets. Then in that case, we recommend at least three times a month. On a regular basis, every 12 to 15 days. Okay. Is there a website for folks to keep up to date with uh, Green Clean? Yes. It is greencleancayman.com. Great. Okay, just that. And also <laughs> we have a email. It says uh, info at greencleancayman.com. What are your hours of operation, Mr. Mr. Halston? We operate from 8 until 5. 8 until 5. And that's oh. 7 days a week. Sorry? Seven days a week. Seven days a week. So that's right now, Sunday. Yeah, right now you're working um, six days a week. Okay. But we can work seven. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, seven costs extra. That's time and a half. Time and a half. Mr. Hulston, it's great to have you in the studio this morning. We have to make way for the for the 8 o'clock news. But before you go, just just why should someone choose green, clean home care services? In a nutshell. Uh, Green Clean Home Care Services are interested in taking care of people and the environment. And we try to do it with the best prices available. And we want to develop a customer relationship. It's all about uh, educating the customer as well, not just working for them and taking their money. We educate the customer as we go along. And I like the fact that you take care of your employees. Without your employees, you don't have a business. That's right. Are you going to give them a raise of pay this Christmas? Some bonus, Mr. Hudson? Yeah. I don't want to put you on the spot, you know. Uh, they're going to get, get a special treat to lunch. Get a special treat. I, mm -hmm. And uh, maybe some gifts. Can I pull and I come? I'll have Paul to loves to eat, you know. He my, loves to my eat. Wife is a tr my wife is a tremendous cook. I'll have to get Paul in on that. We get, well, okay. <laughs> Mr. Hudson, thank you so much for your proud sponsorship of RC Fusion. And it's great to have you on the buzz this morning. I All the best it. with your new business. And we look forward to hearing great things from Green Clean uh, Home Care Services. Thank you much. Thank you for having me.
Thank you so much. Stay tuned for a time check and Radio Cayman's news, weather, and we'll have your traffic report. And then join us for the second segment of The Buzz. And The Buzz this morning on the second segment will feature Cayman Current, which is a digital-first nonprofit media organization. Thanks to our sponsors. Radio Cayman Time Check is now 8 a.m. This time check is brought to you by our friends at Foster's. This Christmas, let's celebrate all the good things, from the people we love to the food that we can't get enough of. Foster's is here to help you create a Christmas you'll never forget with the freshest ingredients, the widest range, and products from around the world. We receive fresh produce delivery seven days a week, jet fresh seafood three times a week, and are the exclusive retailer of Waitrose products in Cayman. So come shop with us this Christmas from East end to West Bay. We're the island supermarket. Fosters, better because we care. The voice of the Cayman Islands. 89.9 FM in Grand Cayman and 93.9 FM in Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. Silver wings shining in the sunlight. Radio Cayman. The 8 a.m. News is proudly sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. For further information, please visit chamberpension.ky. The Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. We're here for you. We are a not-for-profit, member-centric plan with a democratically elected volunteer board of trustees representing all sectors of the Cayman Islands economy. We have an all-in expense ratio of less than 1%, over 20,000 members and 490 million U.S. dollars in assets under management. We were the first multi-employer pension plan approved by the regulator in the late 1990s, and today we are still strong, secure, and are here for our employees and employees. Alike. If you would like to join or require further information, visit chamberpension.ky. And for information as it happens, follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Email admin at pensions.ky or call 745-7630. The Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. We're here for you. Your voice, your choice for today's biggest news. Radio Cayman. The voice of the Cayman Islands. With your latest news, I'm Carsley Fuller. The Cayman Islands Customs and Border Control Service is extending its opening hours at the Collections Office to allow for the collection of imported goods for the Christmas holiday. Radio Cayman's April Cummings reports. It is a busy time of year for Customs and Border Control as the number of imports traditionally climb for Christmas. In response, CBC is expanding its hours to make it easier for customers to clear their goods before the holidays begin. For the weeks of December 14th and the 21st, the Collections Office will stay open from 8.30 a.m. until 6 p.m. with the exception of Friday, December 18th, when the office closes at noon. And during the same period, the CBC Courier Office will be open from 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m., closing at noon on December 18th. The CBC Courier Office will remain closed on Saturdays. The Collections Office is located at CBC headquarters on Owen Roberts Drive and the Courier Office on the same road between the airport post office and the CBC warehouse. April Cummings, Radio Cayman News. The Board of the Cayman Islands Tourism Association announces its main goals for tourism in 2021. Following a strategic planning meeting, the vision for 2021 includes a 25% return to stay over visitation by Easter as compared to 2019, 50% by the middle of summer, and 75% return by Thanksgiving. The CETA Board says it has reviewed the best practices from other Caribbean destinations and has learned from the, quote, well-tested protocols that Cayman could use in safely reopening the borders. Michael Tibbetts, MD, is the vice president of the CETA board. He's also one of the founders of a website called reopenkman.com. And I want to be clear that we're not advocating to open the borders tomorrow, um, even this month or next month. We are advocating to develop a plan so that everyone in the tourism sector can, um, can run their businesses accordingly. And I think that has been a real challenge for us over the last couple of months in particular Mr. Tibbet says without a plan, business owners aren't sure how to proceed. Do they keep staff or let them go, even which bills to pay? He says it's been a challenge. I've just heard from many people, working class Canadians, business owners, we're losing hope. We, we are losing hope uh, that, that, that there's not a plan to reopen. Dr. Tibbetts tells Radio Cayman the island needs a data-driven approach that balances risk reduction with a logistically feasible strategy to allow visitors to return to the islands. Now with a check of international news, here's the BBC, which will take us out of the newscast. 
I'm Carsley Fuller from Radio Cayman's Newsroom. BBC News with Jerry Smith. A 90-year-old British woman has become the first person in the world to be given a fully tested vaccine against COVID-19. Margaret Keenan was given the Pfizer-BioNTech jab as the UK began a mass vaccination programme, the biggest the country has ever undertaken. Protesters in the Armenian capital Yerevan are blocking main roads and marching through the streets, calling for the resignation of the Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan. They say he must bear responsibility for the loss of large swathes of territory in and around Nagorno-Karabakh during the recent conflict with Azerbaijan. The ride-hailing firm Uber is selling its self-driving car division to Aurora, a specialist company set out by leading Silicon Valley executives. The move ends a five-year effort by Uber to develop its own self-drive vehicles. The Sri Lankan government has approved a Chinese plan to build a large tyre factory with generous tax concessions. A Chinese company will invest $300 million and export at least 80% of its production. The United States has approved the sale of its 11th arms package to Taiwan since President Trump took office. It's agreed to supply the island with a military communication system. Liberians are voting in a referendum on whether to shorten presidential terms from six to five years. Liberians are also choosing whether to repeal a ban on dual nationality. It would have a big impact on the hundreds of thousands of Liberians who fled civil war to live in the US and elsewhere. Nepal and China have made a joint announcement that Mount Everest is officially 86 centimetres taller than previously calculated by Nepal. They've determined the exact height at 8,848.86 metres. And those are the latest stories from BBC News. The 8am News is proudly sponsored by the Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. For further information, please visit chamberpension.ky. The Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan. We hear for you. Are you aware of the performance of your pension plan? The Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan provides quarterly fund fact sheets for our members to stay informed with the plan's performance. For the year ended August 31st, various life cycle funds provided returns between 9.2% and 16.5%. And our all-in expense ratio is currently the lowest it's ever been, a record low at 0.72%. Visit chamberpension.ky to review our fund fact sheets. You can see the performance as far back as 10 years. Remember that pensions are a longer-term investment strategy. Focus on the long-term rather than the short-term returns. The Cayman Islands Chamber of Commerce Pension Plan continues to perform for you. Stay in touch with Radio Cayman for the latest in news and information. Follow Radio Cayman on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Download the Radio Cayman app or log on to our website, www.radiocayman.gov.ky. Radio Cayman, your voice, your choice, your radio. CG Britt K would like to wish our clients, their families, our staff, and our communities a happy holiday. In this time of celebration, let us remember what this past year has taught us. That we can be in different rooms, different homes, or on different islands, yet never feel apart. Because we are here for each other and stronger together. We look forward to the new year, to serving your insurance needs, and to always putting people first. Happy holidays from our CG Brit K family to yours. Your Radio K Man 6 p.m. news, Monday through Friday, is brought to you by Logic, your life connected. Good morning, Kima. Let's uh, briefly take a look at your latest weather. Present temperature, 79 degrees Fahrenheit, but feels like about 82. Conditions are mostly cloudy. Winds are out of the north-northeast at 15 miles per hour. Wind gusts similar. Relative humidity, 83%. Last night's low was at 73. Barometric pressure now at 29.95 and rising. Fresh northeasterly winds and rough seas are expected today as a cold front moves south of our area and the associated high-pressure system builds over the western Gulf of Mexico. 
forecast for today, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with a 40% chance of showers. Temperatures will rise to the mid-80s. Winds will be north to northwest at 15 to 20 knots. Seas will be rough with wave heights of 4 to 6 feet, especially along the west and north coasts. Small craft should exercise caution over the open waters. Later tonight, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with a 40% chance of showers. Temperatures will fall to the low 70s. Winds will be north to northwest, 15 to 20 knots. Seas will be rough with wave heights of 4 to 6 feet, especially along the west and north coasts. Small craft should continue to exercise caution over the open waters. We are presently at a high tide. A low tide is coming up at 10.26 this morning. It's going to be high at 4.30 this afternoon. and Sorry, high at 4.30 this afternoon and low at 11.18 tonight. For tomorrow, high tide is at 5.54, low at 11.43 a.m. and high at 5.18 p.m. 5.46, sunrise for Wednesday morning at 6.49 the outlook is for a decrease in winds and seas expected from Thursday morning as the cold front moves further south of the Cayman area. That's your latest weather right here on your Radio Cayman. During these unprecedented times, Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands, is pleased to bring you the Cayman Strong Series. The Cayman Strong Series is brought to you by On Course Cayman. Visit OnCourse.ky to view a full list of wellness services and their qualified team. On Course Cayman, health, wellness, and happiness. Change your thinking, change your life. Practicing forgiveness is a healthy habit. As pastor and best-selling author Gary Chapman wrote in his book, The Five Love Languages, How to Express Heartfelt Commitment to Your Mate, Forgiveness is not a feeling, it is a commitment. It is a choice to show mercy, not to hold the offense up against the offender. Forgiveness is an expression of love. Change your thinking. Change your life. Radio Cayman's Cayman Strong series was brought to you by On Course Cayman. Visit OnCourse.ky to view a full list of wellness services and their qualified team. On Course Cayman, health, wellness, and happiness. These days, feelings of loneliness, anxiety, stress, and depression can be overwhelming. Just know you are not alone. On Course Cayman offers private mental health services for children, teens, adults, and groups. Visit OnCourse.ky to view a full list of wellness services and their qualified team. On Course Cayman. Health, wellness, and happiness. The traffic report is brought to you by Subway. Planning a meeting, event, or office celebration? Visit Subway.ky to place your catering order today. Once again, good morning to you, Cayman. Let's take a look at your traffic situation. Just looking at the uh, camera, looking down at uh, Crichton Boulevard, east-west arterial. Uh, traffic in uh, heading towards town is uh, moving quite good. And uh, looking outside King Sports Center, we got traffic backed up along the Linford Pearson Highway, heading on to Shamrock Road. Uh, also traffic all along Crew Road as well. To make your way to the uh, traffic lights on the uh, Smith Road. Once you get past that, held in onto Alda Avenue, turning onto Elgin Avenue or Thomas Russell Way. Traffic should be flowing. Most streets in Georgetown are busy at the moment. If you're coming through Windsor Park or along Walker's Road through South Sound, experience some traffic there as well. Got some light rain in certain parts of Georgetown, so roads are going to be getting wet, so drive with caution. Of course, looking at the roundabout outside El Thompson, getting busy, traffic heading in a northern direction, onto Godfrey Nixon Way, onto the S.D. Tibbetts Highway. Uh, once getting onto the S.D. Tibbetts Highway, traffic is moving good out there. We're heading towards the airport. Road is basically very much clear at the moment. Cayman Brack, Little Cayman, very minimal traffic out there as well. Buckle up, stay safe. Don't be texting while driving. Look out for those on bicycles and pedestrians. Also those on motorbikes. The traffic report, of course, brought to you by our friends at Subway. At Subway, we want to express our sincere appreciation for your support this year. 
We're still here because of you. Because you took care of us during a difficult time, let us take care of you and your family this holiday season. It's been a stressful year. You don't need the stress of planning big holiday dinners or parties. Just give us a call. We'll make it easy and work with you to plan your special occasion. Enjoy our catering, boxes, gift certificates, and of course, our delicious cookies and new flavors. We thank you for supporting local. Subway, eat fresh. The Traffic Report is brought to you by Subway. Planning a meeting, event, or office celebration? Visit subway.ky to place your catering order today. Radio came and maintaining the innovation. On a daily basis, making it easy to connect with you, our listeners. Add us to WhatsApp today, 925-3261. That's 925-3261. Radio Cayman. Send a text or voice note. Can I send a request, please? Uh, you don't really have to ask us. Just send a request. This is a shout out to my ex. Radio Cayman, the voice of the Cayman Islands. Radio Cayman maintaining the innovation. Anita Khan. Good morning. Welcome back to the Business Buzz. It's a pleasure to have our second guest in the studio this morning on the second segment of the Business Buzz. It's 15 and a half after 8 o'clock. Thanks to Paul for manning the camera, <laughs> manning the board, manning the door. Thank you, Paul. And to our producer, Miss Susan Watson. Susan is off today. Susan, enjoy your day off. The Business Buzz is proudly sponsored by Cayman Medical Supplies and Cayman Insurance Center. On the second segment this morning, it's a pleasure to welcome in the studio our guest, Mr. Patrick Brendel. And Patrick is the editor and founder of Cayman Current. Thank you for joining us this morning on the Business Buzz, Patrick. Uh, good morning. Thanks Am for I allowed to me. call you Patrick? Yes, of course. <laughs> Patrick, it's a pleasure to have you in the studio this morning. Now... We're speaking about a brand new business. The Cam- uh, let me just give them a short uh, description of your company. You can elaborate a bit later on. The Cayman Current is a digital first, nonprofit, nonpartisan media organization that informs, promotes civic en- engagement, and facilitates discourse on education in the Cayman Islands. It was founded in September 2020. Brand new business. Brendel, can you share a little bit of your professional background and how you became involved in the news industry? Sure. And uh, first of all, thanks for having me here on the program. You're very welcome. And I'm pleased to have this opportunity to get the word out about The Current and to collaborate with a colleague in the local media. And uh, as far as how I got involved in journalism, I suppose I just kind of fell into it, uh, which, as you know, is a common story in our industry. Uh, Originally, I'm from a small town in South Texas uh, called Victoria. It's about the same size of Cayman, actually, about 60,000 people. And although it's not physically surrounded by water, um, it is insular in the sense that it's about 100 miles away from the nearest larger city. Um, So there are some similarities between um, Victoria and Cayman. So when I graduated high school, I went to college at the opposite end of the United States, up in northern Indiana at a school called the University of Notre Dame. Uh And um, at Notre Dame, I studied English literature. And all the way through school, I didn't know what I wanted to do career-wise, but I just knew I wanted to be able to write. And it was at Notre Dame that I met my wife, Rachel, who is Caymanian, so you can blame her for me (laughs) being here. And We blame her for bringing you here. (laughs) And at graduation, I I moved to Cayman for the first time uh, in January 2005. And as you know, that was right after Hurricane Ivan. Um, So for somebody like me who didn't have a lot of skills in, say, construction, there weren't a lot of job opportunities. Um, So long story short, I ended up moving back to my hometown in Texas. And I got a job doing uh, data entry for a construction subcontractor, which may have been the most boring job of all time. Uh, I think I lasted about a month. (laughs) So I still had this dream of being a professional writer in some capacity. So one Saturday morning, I walked up to the newspaper building uh, for the Victoria Advocate and uh, basically barged into the newsroom with a one-page resume and, um, you know, some, some line of bull. And uh, I got <laughs> one page is all you need, you know, once once it has some substance. Right. Yeah. 
but I got lucky. Um, they needed someone right there, and I actually um, had known one of the members of the family who owned the newspaper, so she gave me a good word. And uh, so they hired me on a 30-day probationary business um, to see if I would um, work out or How mess long things did you up. Last? Uh, so I ended up working there for a year, and I had a great time. I learned a lot, and in the end, I decided to go to graduate school to study journalism and, and kind of make my career choice official. So I went to the University of Texas at Austin, um, and uh, the woman who's now my wife, Rachel, uh, she joined me there. And um, while I was doing one master's degree, she was doing two in uh, business and public Way policy. Way ahead of you. Yes. <laughs> and... Um, for several years, Austin was kind of the base of our operations, um, though during that time I did work in Washington, D.C. and some other places in Texas. I, I worked for a variety of publications, both print and online, for-profit, non-profit models, and uh, my main focus was covering uh, Texas state government, politics, and policy. After a while, Rachel and I got married and we started having children. And it became clear for financial and family reasons um, that it'd be best for us to leave Austin and move uh, back to one of our hometowns to raise our kids. And honestly, my hometown was never in the running. <laughs> so, so we arrived in Grand Cayman in summer 2011, and I went to work for the Compass as a reporter. Uh, this was back when the Uzels owned it. Um, a couple years later, the Leggies bought the newspaper. I switched over to doing opinion writing for a while and uh, then was made executive editor in charge of the newsroom. Um, after the Bergstroms bought the Compass, um, I, I was there for a few more months, but I left the company about a year ago um, in October, November, and uh, now I've started the Cayman Current, and our first day publishing was the 1st of September. Wow, well, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Now, now I would say your resume would probably be about two and a half pages. Yes. You had to go apply for a job. Well, here we do Here we do CVs so you right. get a little extra space. Right. Well, let's see. That's it. Three pages. Congratulations again, Patrick. Um, now, give us, you've given us your, your professional background. Now, we want to hear a bit of history on uh, Cayman Current. How will Cayman Current work as a not-for-profit uh, organization? Well, I think it'll be helpful to kind of go over again uh, some of the stuff I was doing in Texas. Um, mm -hmm. So when I was te when I was in Texas, I said I, I worked for a variety of news organizations Correct. with different business models. I also have friends and colleagues who work for major nonprofit public service journalism organizations. So I'm familiar with that model, and I try to keep up to date with trends in the industry. Um, after I left the Compass, I knew that in order to stay in journalism in Cayman, I needed to start my own publication. Uh, there really aren't that many places to go here that could offer uh, the kind of role that I wanted to perform. And since I've been in Cayman, I've thought a lot about two main different business models for digital journalism that I think could work here. And, and one is a for-profit subscription-based publication that would give news about a specialized industry, um, probably financial services here. Um, the second model is a nonprofit public service journalism outlet, outlet that relies on charitable donations. And something that's uh, key to both models um, that, that they share is that neither relies on traditional display advertising, mm -hmm. which is an increasingly competitive source of revenue and is resource intensive to produce. Very, very, very resource intensive um, in sales. So yes. I know what it's like. Yes, especially and, especially even more so in radio and TV. Yes, and it's all it's all competitive business, but each one we all hold our own. We and, hold our own corners. Yes, <laughs> but and, um, and luckily in Cayman there is a large um, a bucket of money in in that kind of area. You think? Um, compared to my hometown. <laughs> <laughs> no. A lot of folks probably we don't have not even given a thought to nonprofit journalism. You know, what does nonprofit journalism mean? What does it mean? Uh, how does it work? Now, AP Associated Press, they are a nonprofit organization. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, right. And they started off that way, yes. and they've remained that way for forever. 
up yes. to date. Now, did you have other big organizations or media organizations that are nonprofit? Now, you're starting, uh, you're start, starting solo. You're flying solo with your organization. Correct. Now, where, where has the uh, nonprofit journalism worked before? And like we said, we give an exa- I'll give an example of uh, AP. Uh, how can it work here in Cayman, and Patrick? Um, well, over the past 10 to 15 years, uh, nonprofit news media have accounted for many of the success stories of innovation and journalism in North America. Mm-hmm. Um, there are different reasons why that's different than, say, the UK. Primarily, um, the UK has the BBC, which is um, supported by uh, public funds, Correct. and they really do the job that some of the nonprofits in the U.S. do, for example. Um, but many, so for the past 10 to 15 years, this has been one of the exciting things happening in journalism is the emergence of new nonprofit media. But but many large nonprofit media companies have been around for far longer. Uh, you mentioned the Associated Press. Mm-hmm. There's also PBS, NPR, and other more regional organizations such as EdSource in California, which has been around since 1977 and focuses on education in California. Um, A good resource to learn more about this, and one that I actually use every day, is the Institute for Nonprofit News at INN. I'm writing this down. Yes, (laughs) at (laughs) INN.org. And it's a membership group of nonprofit news media. Mm-hmm. And they have um, about 300 members, um, primarily in, primarily in the U.S. and also in Canada and Puerto Rico. Um, I've inquired about uh, getting K-Man involved, but soon come. <laughs> soon come. Soon come. So, now, how can this? Yeah. How can non uh, nonprofit journalism? How can it create uh, value for the community and funding for the for your new business? Well. There's different models to fund nonprofit journalism. Um, some of them include subscriptions, advertising, uh, fees for service, um, AP charges for wire service, for example. Uh, the one that I've chosen for the current is we're funded 100% through voluntary charitable donations. Um, and based on where I'm coming from and who I know, the main model I look at is the Texas Tribune which is a very successful nonprofit news agency, started about 10 years ago, and they focus on Texas state government. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also look at NPR, ProPublica, EdSource, and um, a, a very impressive education news site called Chalkbeat. Um, how can it work in Cayman? Uh, it's what I'm trying to figure out. And although Cayman's population is smaller than you typically want for this kind of enterprise, uh, there is a lot of wealth here. And there's also a very active and generous philanthropic community. And so adopting a strategy of um, we'll see uh, may seem like a non-answer, but for us it's a conscious part of our strategy. Um, I've adopted what's called a lean start approach for the current, uh, meaning we've pared down the size and expense of the organization as much as possible, and we're constantly seeking and responding to feedback from our audience and our supporters um, that means really what the community signals they need from us and what our supporters want from us. That's the direction we're inclined to go. And you saw something similar in Cayman a few years ago when the YMCA formed. Uh, when they came to Cayman, they spent a good period of time seeking public input um, for what the YMCA would look like here, whether that would be a, a building mm-hmm. or um, what they ended up doing, providing after-school programs, etc. Uh, generally speaking, a growth strategy that's proven successful in the U.S. for nonprofit news is to start with a relatively small number of relatively large donors. And once that financial base is established, to attract as many small donors as you can. So what you want is within three to five years for the majority of your revenue to actually come from individual donors, not major donors or corporate sponsors. And we're really early on that path, but that's the general direction is, that I see for the current. Um, and so right now, the vast majority of our funding, um, which has covered our startup in the first few months of operation, is is from these major donors that come in at a level of uh, $5,000 or more. 
we also have a few individual donors that start at $100 for the year. And um, this is where I say I'm very thankful <laughs> to each and every one of them um, and for what they've been able to contribute. And I did want to single out um, one of our founding sponsors, uh, Broadhurst Law Firm, who jumped on our bandwagon from the very beginning when it was still kind of a cart, not a proper wagon. And they actually, they, they got in so early, in fact, that they were integral in um, helping us get our foundational documents in place so that we can exist as a charity. So, hey, th thanks, guys, and thanks to everybody. And you're working from your kitchen table at home. Yes. I've raised just so enough no money overheads. to have a, a small desk in the corner of my house. And... Um, <laughs> And so, you know, we, we call it, uh, it's, it's, it's efficient. <laughs> it's, it's efficient and sufficient for now. Correct. No, you have it all worked out, Patrick. You have it all worked out, how it's going to work for you. Um, well, as I said, we'll, we'll see. We're, we're looking at kind of a flexible evolution, mm -hmm. and really um, growth and expansion will be determined by the resources available. Um, right now, we're focusing on attracting these major found founding donors, um, and in the future, and this means for me starting next year, I want to branch out to a slightly different form of donations, and that's um, project-specific funding. So, for example, if we want to do an ambitious multi-part series on something like medical education in Cayman or the intersection of sports and education, um, something that we otherwise wouldn't be able to, to do um, given our core operations, um, then we'd go out and seek sponsorship in order to fund the cost of those projects specifically. Uh, we'll also be looking at getting sponsors for particular parts of our website. For example, our scholarships directory, um, our document library, and our weekly newsletter. And funding from those sponsors is earmarked to those sections of the website. So they'll be used specifically to enhance and maintain those parts of the operation. We have lots of idea. It's oh, coming I, down I, I in can, the I can execution. See, I can just see you bursting at the seams, Patrick. But you know what? Hold the thought yes. because uh, we'll take a quick break. We also have a caller on the line. They have a question or two maybe. But uh, we're going to take that quick break. I want to thank our sponsors of the Business Buzz today, Cayman Medical Supplies and Cayman Insurance Center. This season, Vigoro is stocking something for everyone in our two garden centers. Christmas decorations, succulents, ceramics, blooms, orchids, garden sculptures and accessories, mobiles and garden furniture, water fountains and wall art, and even fairies for the little ones. Make it a Vigoro Christmas with a gift that will be treasured forever. Both garden centers will be open on Christmas Eve till 6 p.m. Merry Christmas from Vigoro. You're picking up. Perfect. Right. Boom, tsh, boom, tsh. Yo, why are you making that noise? I am trying to practice. Practice for what? Don't you know who's coming on the show? Wait, 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 no. Isn't it the head boy and head girl of Clifton and John Gray? Yes, plus my amazing rap skills. Nope, no one wants to hear that. You mean the rappers from Always Determined, mentored by Stuart Wilson. Well, this is Stuart Wilson, and I'd like to take this opportunity to big up my good friend James Miles, also known as Jamo. I want to say uh, welcome to ADS as well. Always Determined, the young group with their new single, Snapping. And I also want to say a huge big up to Youth Flex and the Youth Flex crew and all the listeners at home. One love. The word of the week is recalcitrant. R-E-C-A-L-C-I-T-R-A-N-T. It is an adjective that means resistant to authority or having an substantially uncooperative attitude toward authority or discipline. You can join us this Wednesday from 4 to 5 p.m. right here on Radio Cayman, 89.9 FM. Plus, you can join us on YouTube Live and for Youth Flex, a program for all people by young people. Youth Flex, more than talk. Business Buzz. Business Buzz with your host, Anita Khan. Welcome back to the Business Buzz. Thank you so much for joining us. We're discussing news, nonprofit journalism. And we're looking at a new business, came on current, and we have in the studio this morning, Mr. Patrick Brendel. Patrick is the editor and founder of Came on Current. Uh, before the break, we 
had a bit of history and how this all got started for Patrick. And right now we want to talk about some of the challenges, but we do have a caller on the line. Caller, good morning. Hello. Hello, good hi, morning. Hi, good morning. Thank you for joining us on the Business Buzz. Yeah. Uh, we're talking about what non-profit news demand current. Is that the, the, uh, the subject this morning? Yes, sir. The name of the business is Cayman Current. Just started uh, this year, September. And we have in the studio the editor and founder of Cayman Current, Mr. Patrick Brendo. Yeah, well, I, I caught a little bit of what you're talking about, and I I uh, caught the part where he said uh, it's being funded by donors. Correct, uh, volunteers and uh, charitable, um, what was the other one, Patrick? Help uh, here. From individuals and individuals. Um, mm -hmm. company uh, sponsors. Okay, uh, what's going to be your outlet for this news that you're going to be creating? Well, I guess um, we're a digital first uh, news organization. Our home online is at www.kmancurrent.org. And we're also hoping to form um, partnerships and agreements with other media organizations in Cayman. Um, and they're actually free to use any of the content that we publish. Oh, so you're going to be operating then as a, a charitable uh, NGO that is uh, uh, news, journalism, and so forth. Correct. Um, so I think it's important the Cayman Current, we are a registered um, nonprofit limited liability company, and we have been um, blessed by the nonprofit organization's registrar. So we have the same setup as, um, say, uh, Rotary, for example. So, so we are a charity. We're an education nonprofit that pursues our mission through public service journalism. So our mission is to improve the education system in Cayman through our journalism by informing the community, by engaging the community, and facilitating, facilitating constructive discourse on the topic. Well, can I ask, what, what, what are you thinking about <clears throat> your first project? Where, where, where are you going to start that educating the Cayman Island public on, uh, I think, things yeah, yes, and uh, so we launched September first, and as I had, um, as I had mentioned, with us adopting a lean, with um, adopting our lean start approach to the business, um, it was, um, you know, instead of doing a big marketing and ad campaign, we just got to work. So on September first, we started publishing content on our website, and. Apart from handling the day-to-day -day education news, one of the ways that we've been, um, the foundation of our editorial strategy is we've been conducting series of interviews with um, leaders in, the ed in education in Cayman. So actually our first interview was with Peter Carpenter, who's the head schools inspector for the Office of Education mm -hmm. Standards. We've interviewed Jonathan Clark, who's the principal of John Gray. Matthew Reed, the principal of Prospect, Stacy McAfee, the head of UCCI, um, Paul Robinson, who's the head of the public library system, um, and uh, Juliet Austin, who's the um, new director of Life. And um, actually this week, I hope to put up an interview that we've done with the leaders of uh, Little Trotter's um, farm and preschool. And um, Little Trotters is really interesting because uh, they're the only school in Cayman to achieve an excellent rating from the school inspectors. And they were, they were actually a very good interview. So I'm looking forward to that. Okay. If, if your, your audience is the Cayman Islands uh, community, how relevant do you think those people that you named out, how CI relevant are they? Well, in my opinion, they're very relevant. Um, they're leaders of um, 
say, uh, public schools. They're uh, leaders of local charities that work with our children. Um, if, and as I said, you know, I'm always consciously seeking out and responding to feedback from the community. So if anybody out there thinks of someone that would be great to interview or a topic that I should pursue, uh, my email inbox is open. You can contact me on my website, on Facebook, on Instagram. And, you know, so I'm, I'm listening and learning as I'm going through this journey. Okay. Well, one, one other question. Uh, you, you mentioned all these donors. Uh, <clears throat> do you think that, that uh, is, is that creating that much difference between uh, the, the actual output other than a news organization uh, calling for sponsorships and so forth? I mean, do you think that you're going to get nothing for nothing? Well, that's actually a very interesting topic and something that um, that I'm interested in, and it and it's um, especially as it pertains to Cayman, where this kind of um, nonprofit business model is very new. Um, so, in terms of the way I think about it, for say a hundred or more years, advertisers and news organizations had struck a grand bargain, where advertisers were paying for eyeballs or in the case of radio, eardrums. <laughs> and news media drew those eyeballs, that audience, by pursuing journalism. And much of it was excellent journalism that society needs. And for a long time, it worked. But it was always a bit of an unnatural relationship in that advertisers were buying eyeballs, but news organizations were producing news. And when it came down to it, many advertisers didn't really care what the news organizations were doing as long as they got the numbers. And then when something they perceived as a better deal came along, their, do their dollars migrated. And um, specifically, let's look at Facebook and Google. Those two companies have gobbled up about 55% of total digital ad spend uh, just to start off with. And um, a lot of that money used to go to traditional journalism organizations. Um, so how a nonprofit is different is unlike this kind of grand bargain that I mentioned, uh, the nonprofit model has a consistency and elegance that, that I like. Um, donors pay for the current to further its mission of improving education through journalism, and the current produces journalism in order to improve education. Our product and our mission are one and the same. Uh, <clears throat> I'm sure you're, you're aware, I would think, of a, uh, there was a lot of NGOs that was uh, basically, I think, more or less under the same line that, that I hear you uh, exposing this morning. You know, actually, uh, media moguls who created these uh, organizations. Uh, in fact, we had one visit here, came out many years ago. Uh, uh, I think it, uh, it was the publishing company of the, the Miami News and Miami Herald back in those days. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, uh, Cox Communications or... Yes. Remember, remember There's the also day? Conrad Black had an interest in media here out of Chicago. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, very big, very big interest in media. <laughs> and if you look at some of these interests, hey, uh, maybe that's a... That, that that that's a little throwback for you to, to look at that. But did you have you ever? I mean, have you, have you heard of Gabriel Heater? I have not. No. No, but you know what, listener, we'll have to have you in the studio to have a one-on-one -on -one with uh, Mr. Brendel at some point in time. How about that? Yes. Well, that might work, but <laughs> then, then again, it might not. But uh, anyway. <laughs> I I I I I I'll leave you with uh, Patrick Swayze and John Cameron Swayze and uh, some of some of some of the other Walter Cronkite and uh, some of the other you know news organizations or news people where today all of the cable companies and so forth and so on they they they're not nearly news organizations they're merely 
editorialist. And I think you have to be careful that uh, with all these donors that you don't get uh, pushed into a, 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 a special interest avenue. Yes, sound advice. And I'm pretty sure advice well taken, Patrick. Yes. And Call I guess mm -hmm. I just say on that point, I mean, my my viewpoint on on that is the real product of a journalism organization is in, is the organization's integrity and the amount of trust that people place in your organization. And the moment that you start trading on that integrity um, for some dollars or for some donor support is the moment that you um, degrade your own institution and it it destabilizes and um, your your organization in the long term. So it's it's just not a good idea to do. Now, listener, can we uh, keep those questions for another time because he wants to uh, wrap up with his. Uh, with his new company, and we appreciate those questions, especially the last one. I'm pretty sure that he will not compromise the integrity of his newly found company with uh, anyone's agenda. Thank you, listener. We'll take a quick commercial break. When we come back, we'll wrap up the final segment of the Business Buzz this morning. Thanks to our sponsors, Cayman Medical Supplies and Cayman Insurance Center. Oh, oh gosh. <sighs> Don't let the stress of taking care of loved ones get you down. Home care, now made easier with Cayman Medical Supplies. 100% Caymanian owned. Cayman Medical Supplies now stocks a wide range of home care supplies, hospital beds, all types of wheelchairs, including beach access wheelchairs, lifts, commodes, shower chairs, walkers, Curad brand orthopedic supplies, free blood glucose monitors with the purchase of one pack of test strips, blue underpads, and a whole lot more. Need home care convenience? Drop by Cayman Medical Supplies at 93 Smith Road, Windward Center, or call 949-6211. Free delivery. Open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Still delivering island-wide for your convenience. Attention Caymanians, the registration deadline for the 2021 elections is January 4th. Caymanians turning 18 on or before the May 26th election may register now. Every vote will count in our May 2021 general election. In order to vote in the 2021 elections, you must register by the 4th of January. For more information, visit elections.ky or the elections office at Baytown Office Suites opposite the Wharf Restaurant. Anita Khan. Welcome back to the Business Buzz. We're discussing the brand new company, a media organization, Cayman Current, with Mr. Brendel, Patrick Brendel, who is the editor and founder of Cayman Current. And we're keeping current this morning. Thanks to our listener uh, who just called in and had several questions for Patrick. Thank you, Patrick, for uh, taking up those questions this morning. Now, before the break, I, I had a couple of thoughts on, on what the listener said about... Um, um, non uh, non profit uh, journalism may be swinging uh, towards uh, your donors, uh, your contributors, um, financial contributors, swinging towards um, their agenda. Now, we know for um, for instance, uh, for profit journalism, a lot of those organizations have to swing with what uh, their um, advertisers might want to hear, might want what you to elaborate on. Now, Patrick, going back to what the listener said, um, and he had a lot to say. We want to thank him again. What are some of the challenges facing traditional um, nonprofit media, especially in, 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 this, in this conversation, your Cayman Current, and how can nonprofit media supplement and support uh, these organizations. Well, I think I went over I went over a little bit of this uh, mm -hmm. when we were talking to the listener. Um, but so the challenges facing facing traditional for profit media are diverse. They're pretty well documented, and it's something I could argue about for hours, either on the radio or 
in my kitchen with a glass of wine. Uh, in essence, there are shifts in reader consumption habits from print to digital and, and also from broadcast to digital. In terms of subscription and advertising, readers and advertisers have been willing to pay far less for digital products uh, than for print products. Uh, so the industry shift to online has been described by some as um, trading print dollars for digital dimes. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, as I alluded to earlier, when an organization takes its product online, it's no longer competing with other publications locally, say the Cayman Compass versus the Caymanian Times. It's, it's now competing with the New York Times and the LA Times and Facebook and Google. And um, there's an effective duopoly online between Facebook and Google, Google as they account for the majority. They, they suck in more than half of all digital ad revenue online. So it's tough. Um, reductions in revenue in traditional media have led to reduction in staff and coverage. Uh, many news organizations are working much more efficiently than they used to, but in the end, they're doing less with less. And um, some of the casualties of the reduction in coverage have been in what I like to call um, peas and carrots topics. And these are things like education and health care and, um, say, the criminal justice system. And, and it's these things that when, you're at the, when the reader's at the buffet, they're not the first things they're reaching for. But ultimately, it's the things that are good for you, and it's good for democracy. And these are the things people should be consuming as part of their news diet. And um, I think that's where a nonprofit can step in. Because the revenue that we get isn't dependent on these eyeballs, and we're not unduly motivated by trying to... Um, get all these hits and numbers and engagement and, and selling points mm -hmm. that people in the media use. What the donors are paying for is for us to further our mission of improving education by informing the public. And so one of the things this allows us to do is all of the content that the current produces is free to readers. We don't have any subscriptions. We don't have any paywalls. And additionally, all of our content is free for republication by other media. We're basically a free wire service. If another media house wants to use a story, they can just copy and paste it. Please credit the Cayman Current. Mm -hmm. And so in order for us to achieve our mission, we need our content to be as widely viewed as possible. It just doesn't have to be on our own platform. Having our work appear in other publications helps to accomplish that. And I like to, I say, and it's true, is the current is not a competitor to existing news media in that we don't compete with them for advertising or subscription revenue. We're a resource for the entire Cayman Islands community, including for those other media outlets. So you think at some point in time you'll go hard on the hard topics? We've got uh, general elections coming up here in the Cayman Islands. We do have our local uh, issues. Are you going to go hard with those uh, topics at some point. Yeah, and um, that's really what I like the best is investigative journalism. Um, that is what, while it's important to kind of keep up with the daily, the daily content and let people at a bare minimum know what's going on, it's really these investigative enterprise projects that every news organization hangs their hat on and what people will eventually um, identify with that news organization. Um, in terms of harder topics, we've already been um, producing um, stories on the new John Gray High School project, for example. Mm -hmm. And um, as it was revealed uh, under questioning by Arden McLean in a finance committee a couple weeks ago, uh, the total price tag for that project is coming up at $170 million CI. Um, <laughs> and so we've done some uh, requests and document requests on that, done some comparisons with how ex how much money is that exactly to spend on a school of that size. Uh, you'll have to go to my website to um, <laughs> get the details. <laughs> get the details. But okay. just the bottom line is on a um, per student basis, it is several times more expensive. And this goes for Clifton Hunter as well. 
they're, they're several times more expensive than even the most expensive jurisdictions, say in the United States, and that's San Francisco, New York City. Um, the new John Gray project would rank among, I believe, the top five most expensive high schools ever built in the United States, more than double the most expensive school ever built in Florida. So people can parcel that out about um, the difference in construction market and prices in Cayman compared to everywhere else. But at the bottom line is it is a considerable amount of a considerable investment. In terms of the campaign season, we are a non-political organization. We're non-partisan. We don't identify with any party or candidate. That being said, education is the number one most important issue facing the Cayman Islands or facing any society. Unlike any other issue, education impacts every facet of society from health care, uh, public health, uh, the economy, workforce development, um, uh, criminal justice. Mm -hmm. it, it's all it's all related to education. And that, that's the reason why the Cayman Current focuses on education. And we'll, we'll need another hour for this, Patrick. Yes, but <laughs> I guess, but just to, it's a br brief summary is, um, so we're going to be active in term in, during the political campaign in mm -hmm. terms of raising the awareness of education in the campaign. I, I would love to hear from every single candidate for office what their plan on education is. And I would love to get viewpoints and perspective from the community on what they want to hear about education. The Cayman Current does not have an institutional viewpoint or editorial opinion on education. So I'm setting my own personal opinion aside. I want to hear from everybody else. Okay. And while we're there, just give that number out again, Patrick, for Cayman Current. So the Cayman Current's website is www.caymancurrent.org. We're also on Facebook and Instagram under Cayman Current. Um, you can email me directly at pbrendel at caymancurrent.org. It's probably easier to go to my website. Um, or you can give, give us a call at 326-5064. And I would encourage um, everybody listening who's interested in education to sign up for our weekly current newsletter. It comes out on Sundays, and I promise I keep the word count down. So it's a five minutes or less read, and you can be informed about everything going on uh, in regards to education in Cayman, and not only what The Current is producing, but I also include links to education-related stories from other media organizations online and any other news story I see that I think is relevant to education in Cayman from around the world. While we're on the topic of education, Patrick, what can be done to get more young people interested in journalism? It's a journalism is a tough career path in um, for Caymanians in a community like this. And as somebody who's worked in journalism in in my own hometown, I'm aware of conflicts of interest and everyone knowing you and your family and wanting to talk to you in the grocery store. Um, so I really can empathize with folks who find that it'd be tough to practice journalism here. Uh, in terms of the economy, the most lucrative industries in command are law, accounting, banking. Um, so as a journalist organization, you have to compete for talent with industries that require a similar level of education, but they pay much better and they may not involve working nights, weekends, and holidays. So my general advice to young journalists anywhere is don't do it unless you love it. And if you love Don't it, tell us you love it. That's yeah. right. And if you love it, do it, and do strongly consider gaining experience overseas um, before you consider bringing those talents back home. And you know, I mean, I think it. Um, you know, journalism is one of those callings that can and does make a difference in society. And if any young people out there are interested in journalism, um, give me a call. Give me an email. I'm more than happy to have a coffee with you sit down and and try to help you um, the best that I can get you on a good career path. And that number again is 326-5064, 326-5064 for Cayman Current, the owner, uh, editor, founder, Mr. Brendel. And let, let me ask you, we only have about a minute left on the program, but I just want to ask you, um, as a nonprofit organization, Cayman Current, you 
depend solely on entirely on donations. How can persons get or uh, and show support and get involved? Well, go to our website, uh, caymancurrent.org. There's mm -hmm. several links on the homepage that um, to support the current. That will take you to a donation form. You can also email or call me directly, and I'll be happy to arrange <laughs> for you oh. to pay, give us money. <laughs> if you're not in a position to give financially right now, mm -hmm. a big help for us is to simply visit our website, read our stories, share our stories, like or follow us on social media, or tell a friend. Um, give us story tips, share your ideas, send in viewpoints. We're listening to the community, and we really want to start high-level conversation on education in Cayman, and we really need the support from everybody. Patrick, I want to wish you all the best with Cayman Current. I'll definitely be on that later today, and uh, I'm not sure about clicking the donation. I'm always broke, <laughs> but uh, I want to wish you all the best with Cayman Current, and hopefully we'll hear lots more about how you're progressing as you're moving forward. We want to have you back in the studio, but in the meantime, good luck as you move forward, and Merry Christmas. Thanks to our sponsors, Cayman Medical Supplies and Cayman Insurance Center. Thank you for your proud sponsorship of the Business Buzz this morning. I'm your host, Anita Kahn, saying thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of your week. And don't forget to join us once again on Thursday for another Business Buzz. Thanks to, Paul, to Silver Fox for holding it down today. And our producer, Ms. Susan Watson, who's on our day off. Susan, have a good one. Thank you. The Business Buzz is brought to you by Cayman Insurance Center, celebrating 46 years in the Cayman Islands, specializing in property life and other lines of insurance products and services. And also brought to you by Cayman Medical Supplies. Call them at 949-2500.